Okay, good evening everyone. My name is David Schgade. I'm the ELISA InnoCore project coordinator at FAU, and I would like to welcome you to the second ELISA innovation talk, this time hosted by Friedrich Alexander Universität Erlang Nürnberg in the Aula in Schloss. The ELISA innovation talks are an event series set up by the ELISA InnoCore project funded by the European Union's Horizon 2020 research and innovation program. With the ELISA innovation talks, we want to bring the knowledge generated in ELISA to the broader public while making ELISA a vibrant forum for innovation and Europe and the world a better place. These are the ambitious goals of this monthly event series that will give the stage to our best ELISA researchers and innovators to discuss the possibilities, risks and opportunities of technology for sustainable development. Each session is hosted by a different partner institution of our European University, the European Engineering, Learning, Innovation and Science Alliance, in short, ELISA, and streamed to the world on the ELISA YouTube channel from Madrid, Paris, Erlangen, Nuremberg, Pisa, Budapest, Bucharest or Istanbul. All sessions will allow participants to pose their questions to the speakers so that we can have a truly European discourse in which we particularly aim at reflecting European topics. Today, it is my pleasure that we could win uh, Professor Dr. Jörg Franke, the head of the chair for factory automation and production systems, also known as the FABS, at the Department of Mechanical Engineering at Friedrich Alexander Universität Erlangen-Nürnberg. Professor Franke has extensive experience both inside and outside academia. He holds a degree in engineering and a doctorate from FAU where he also worked as research associate and made it up to a research group leader during his doctoral studies. After graduation, he worked for McKinsey, Robert Bosch, ZF Lenksysteme, Ina Scheffler in Shanghai, ABM Greifenberger Antriebstechnik, and in 2009, he was appointed to the chair for factory automation and production systems at FAU. Since then, he has succeeded in attracting so much third-party funding that by now his chair with more than 100 employees is, if I see correctly, by far the largest at FAU. Professor Franke is running eight research groups at his chair in the fields of robotics, engineering systems, automation technology, medical technology, electronics production, electromechanical engineering, signal and power networks, and home automation. Much more could be said, but I want to restrict myself to the latest of his achievements. Professor Franke saw the necessity to adapt engineering education to the challenges posed by the rise of e-mobility and was significantly involved in pushing the idea of the new study program, e-mobility ACES, forward that will start in October at FAU. And this brings us to the topic of today's ELISA innovation talk, the future of e-mobility great challenges and opportunities for European societies. Professor Franke, we are very much looking forward to your ELISA Innovation Talk. The stage is yours. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for this kind introduction, Dr. Schade. Um, I'm uh, very happy to present uh, something about our latest uh, research in the field of uh, electromobility, especially. And uh, as you can see, this uh, title, Great Challenges uh, and Opportunities for European Societies in e-mobility is at the same time a grand challenge for myself as well. For it uh, generates expectations uh, to myself uh, to tell you, uh, indeed, the future of uh, not only the green mobility in Europe, but also the sustaining uh, of our very strong uh, industry in uh, mobility. And I hope that we will find together, maybe later in the discussion, a solution for this uh, very um, hard way uh, to solve these both um, challenges at the same time. Well, um, as uh, Dr. Schade already introduced myself, my name is Jörg Franke. I'm head of uh, FAPS the Institute for Factory Automation and Production Systems. Here you can see um, a view on our laboratory in Nürnberg for the university. It's not only located here in the um, old castle of Erlangen, where it's quite hot for the AC system. Um, it's broken, unfortunately, 
uh, but we have also uh, sites in Nuremberg. I think that you have already seen this picture very often. What does it show? It shows the development of temperatures over the last 100 years. And as you can see easily, uh, in the last 10, 20 years, the temperature is raising. Um, and here you cannot only see the development, but you can feel it. And may, uh, maybe you allow me to put off my jacket, for it's very hot in here. So um, the color, the red color, is getting darker all the time. And uh, at the moment, we have about 35 degrees outside. And I'm expecting, uh, expecting to have uh, these very hot desert-like temperatures in the future as well. So, uh, and uh, therefore, uh, it's a strong mission of my chair uh, to develop and to establish um, technologies to produce a mobility which is emission-free and sustains the environment. And for that, you have already um, explained the Institute for Factory Automation and Production Systems briefly. We do concentrate on production technologies and assembly technologies uh, which focus um, mechatronic products solely. So we start, for example, with the winding of uh, electric motors. So we do have uh, all kinds of different uh, winding technologies, flyer winding, uh, and as you can see here, needle winding. But of course, we do deal uh, very deeply with hairpin um, windings as well. Uh, what we always have to do is the interconnection, the electrical and mechanical interconnection um, for example, for these uh, lids wired uh, cables, we do use different technologies like uh, hot and cold crimping, ultrasonic crimping, soldering, welding. And as you can see here, of course, we do use uh, the laser for the welding of these hundreds of hairpin interconnections, uh, which we do have in our modern electric cars. This is a development with a, a leading southern German um, car manufacturer and they do use this technology in all of their new electric motors for the traction drives. Um, and of course, uh, electric motors is uh, the one side of an electric drive. Of course, we do have to uh, apply um, power electronics. And um, so power electronics is a, another strong research field for the uh, Institute FAPS. Um, but we're always uh, using, as you said, as you see here, lasers, um, even plasma coating for power electronics. So onto the um, silicon component, which is only around about 100, 120 microns thick, we apply um, a thick surface of copper by using plasma. Uh, here we do accelerate small copper particles, around about one microns only in diameter. We accelerate them in plasma, we heat them up a little bit, and then we can um, um, press them onto the surface, for example, of the uh, silicon surface of a power electronic component. And this, exactly this technology, we are able to use for building up the electrodes for solid state uh, batteries as well in the next future. Uh, the topic I want to talk with you or discuss with you and talk about today is um, IPT. What does that mean? IPT is inductive power transfer. That means that we transfer electric energy from the grid, from the infrastructure, into electric cars without a cable. Conductivelessness um, by a high-frequent magnetic field. That could be the future of interconnecting electric cars with a smart grid. And so the agenda for this today's talk um, looks like that. At first, I would like to um, explain the situation, uh, which is defined that we are able to reduce the emissions of uh, individual mobility to zero. We just have to drive electrically. So please do it. Uh, if you ask uh, colleagues in the engineering field uh, who is driving electrically, the fewest are um, doing that. They still uh, are reluctant to transfer or to, or to change their habits from diesel engines to electric cars. So we do have the chance to reduce one-third of the CO2 emissions in every 
a nation just by driving electrically. So that's a nice situation, but uh, unfortunately, um, this new S curve, so we do um, eliminate in the next future the internal combustion engine driven cars by electrically driven cars. And this new S curve always bears the risk that new entrants overtake the market and might be more successful than the incumbent players. That's a big risk we are already seeing. Uh, I will talk about that uh, later. Uh, and at the same time, uh, we do have to enlarge the range of electrically uh, driven cars uh, for else um, nobody would like to use his car, for example, for driving into the vacations or for using longer trips uh, with an uh, e-car. So this is the complication. What can we do? We are not very good in batteries. We are not very good in electronics. We are not very good in software. Uh, unfortunately, um, a big visionary of um, electric driving, uh, electric driving uh, Dr. Dees, uh, CEO, former SC CEO of uh, the company VW, um, has to dismiss his uh, uh, responsibility within VW, and we will see how that will um, react on the success of VW in the long-term future. So the solution I would like to present to you could be combining the technology in the cars, in the electrically, maybe autonomously driven cars with the infrastructure. For the European and especially the German industry is very strong in infrastructure. And we are not that good, if I'm honest, in producing, selling um, consumer goods. We do not like producing TV sets, uh, mobile phones, um, computers, whatever, whatever is produced in very high volumes for very low prices. Uh, we do leave these markets um, mostly to the East Asian countries, nations, and the innovations, sorry to say that, we can discuss it, innovations are often realized in the US. So we are in the middle, we do optimize existing technologies, especially for industry applications, so business to business, that's our focus, and normally not the business to consumer in which we have to produce cheap um, products in very high volume, but that's the, unfortunately, that's uh, the, the game of the future. We will see that electric cars will be much cheaper than the, the conventional cars we see today. For an electric car is quite simple to build, to design, to build, um, and can be even sold um, uh, more efficient. Uh, the only problem is uh, the cost of the batteries, and that could be reduced very significantly by using the energy coming from the infrastructure. So this is uh, the agenda. And uh, I would like to start with the situation. This is a very, very old slide. I showed it, I don't know, for 10 years. And nobody is following me. And the first um, argument to substitute the conventional EICE, internal combustion engine cars, by uh, electric drive is, that is our dependency on crude oil. I have nothing changed in that slide. Uh, it's 10 years old. Uh, as you can see, we do. Uh, need urgently crude oil for uh, producing, refining uh, diesel and or uh, gasoline, of course, kerosene. And you do see that um, we use um, almost one third of the oil for transportation. 40% uh, still for uh, electricity and heat generation and about 20% for industry. That could be discussed as well. Why do we use that much uh, fossil energy in industry? For a big portion of that is uh, uh, the reduction of uh, uh, ore, steel ore, or copper oxides, uh, alum aluminum uh, oxides uh, to build up uh, uh, crude metal, for example, in uh, big steel plants. Uh, is it, does it really make sense, may I ask you, to bring uh, aluminum oxide, bauxite, um, aluminum 203 from Australia 
the farthest place in the world in big ships uh, driven by um, crude oil, of course, and then the ships are followed by uh, other ships uh, carrying coal, for example, and we bring that together in Germany um, and reduce the aluminum oxide with a very high amount of energy to um, sole aluminum uh, to process it further. Would it be um, more intelligent to import directly the aluminum? But that's another discussion. Uh, you see that if we uh, change the transportation from burning oil in the cars to electric drives, then we could um, reduce our strong dependency, which is every day in the news um, um, dramatically. The other arguments, of course, to uh, change uh, from conventional um, motors to electric drives is, of course, air pollution. We have not talked about that for months, if I'm honest. Uh, but still, 10,000 of uh, uh, persons die uh, through, uh, due to traffic-related air pollution. Uh, alone in Germany, still uh, around about 7,000 uh, deaths are due to traffic-related air pollutions. That means more than double the death we do have in uh, uh, traffics by accidents. And uh, therefore, of course, we will have in, uh, in the upcoming years more and more uh, driving bans in the big cities like Milano or London and in German cities as well, uh, for the pollution is still that um, strong. And then last but not least, of course, you can feel it today, uh, we are facing the climate catastrophe. And uh, it looks like we are not willing to do anything uh, to reduce that uh, big problem. But as you can see here, again, we could reduce CO2, um, our carbon footprint, dramatically, again, if we could drive electrically. So the solution is clear. Uh, the question is, how can we move to that uh, solution? Um, and then it's nice, but not necessary, that the EU, EU Commission has banned combustion engines some weeks ago uh, from 2035 uh, onwards. Um, I think it's, it's not that uh, necessary for it would be sufficient if we just um, price the fossil energies by the cost they generate. If we increase the CO2, um, prices year by year, then nobody uh, would like to uh, drive combustion engines any longer. Uh, but unfortunately, we do react the other way around. We reduce the taxes on diesel and gasoline so that the drivers, the consumers can drive longer, more often, and faster. Wonderful. So unfortunately, I'm, I'm I'm the opinion that in 2035, if we do react uh, environmental compatible in setting taxes, for example, um, then we, nobody wants to buy an, an, an old car uh, in 10 years. Okay, that's, uh, but um, at least it shows up that the politicians have recognized the problem and that they are, despite um, the agitation of the industry uh, towards electric mobility. Uh, and so if you analyze, the, th this is the environmental perspective, but uh, what is very important for us as uh, citizens, as employees, um, is of course uh, the impact on the market itself, on the European and German market. Uh, this uh, very strong change um, in automotive industry is very tough at the moment. For in the center, we already see a very tough competition in a shrinking market. Some years ago, we thought we could produce 100 million cars per year. This uh, wish, this dream, maybe this nightmare, um, didn't come true, fortunately. Um, but now at the moment we are down to 70 million or even um, lower. So in this shrinking market, 
we do have um, a very high number of own equipment manufacturers, car own equipment manufacturers, and their number is getting larger and larger all the time. Not in the Western world, but in China especially. Not in, only in China. We do see upcoming car manufacturers in, in Turkey, in um, Vietnam, in uh, all over the world for electric cars can be designed and produced that easily. So the uh, competition is increasing. And on the other side, the differentiation potentials which we had in the past are shrinking. So uh, differentiation from competitors, how could that be with a strong uh, combustion engine, uh, a fast car, high quality appearance in the inside, I don't know. Uh, this is not worth it any longer for if you decide, will my car only use one liter, the, the energy amount of one liter per 100 kilometers, or even less. I think that will get uh, very important and not the, the leather uh, seats in the car or the quality um, appearance. So, and unfortunately, in Germany, okay, we, uh, these disadvantages do follow us all the time. We do have high uh, labor costs. Uh, we don't have any kind of raw materials. We don't have coal, uh, um, um, black coal. We don't have um, ste uh, steel. We don't have um, nothing, uh, no cobalt, no whatever you need to produce uh, new technologies we have to buy these materials from the outside. Unfortunately, our domestic market, which we are looking for, is very small, only five million, three to five million cars per year. Uh, and what is worse, the innovations which we show up uh, are not that meaningful. So we always have to look where do the innovations come from in uh, operating systems, in autonomous driving, in battery technology, in uh, power electronics, which are, of course, in detail coming from the uh, electronic components. Um, and we will see how the CHIP Act, the European CHIP Act, um, will improve that situation. So, unfortunately, in the center, in the competition, um, the border conditions are not very um, helpful for our European car manufacturers. At the same time, the market itself is changing very rapidly. So the, as I said already, the private market shrinks. It's not cool any longer to drive an own car. When I left school, the only wish I had was to have my own car. Uh, if you ask young persons, young people, students, they do not even drive cars. Um, some of them do not even have a driver's license. They use um, uh, bicycles, uh, public transportation, um, micro-mobility. Um, the reason, of course, is uh, on the one hand side uh, that it's easier in big cities, everybody lives in big cities, it's easier to communicate uh, using public transportation and, of course, uh, as a side issue, um, the environmental sensitivity of um, every person is slowly but steadily rising. Uh, Unfortunately, the market power of uh, large customers um, compared to the supplying car OEMs is rising. Today, I read that uh, uh, on the one hand side, the uh, rent car rental company Sixth is buying thousands of electric cars. From where? In the future, from China. So they do test all the uh, new um, brands we do not even even have heard about, like uh, NIO, XPeng, Great Wall, uh, BYD, um, A-Ways, you name them, uh, and they all, uh, they test these cars, and they are normally 20 to 30% uh, cheaper than our um, brands here in Germany and uh, Europe. And these big um, customers, uh, they do decide about the success of uh, new car manufacturers in Europe. So uh, company vehicles, they very slowly change their car, firm car policies uh, from supporting uh, the 
from supporting burning oil, of course, every firm car owner can use as much gasoline or diesel as he wants for free. So you can imagine uh, how environmentally friendly uh, such a driver uh, behaves. He drives as fast as he can, he drives as long as he can, and of course, uh, he, he uses the car in vacation. The, uh, the children, uh, the wife, all do use these cars, uh, these firm cars, and they burn, um, burn oil. So these big company uh, cars, when they do change, and when, do, when they um, allow that their um, employees um, to buy electric cars, then the pressure to our uh, market will uh, raise. <clears throat> Yeah, and uh, unfortunately, big customers uh, like the uh, DHL, Uber, Amazon, they become competitors. So they try to develop their own cars. At least they try to develop their own uh, software, their own um, navigation systems, and their own uh, capabilities to uh, drive taxis or uh, lorries, whatever, uh, autonomously. So from the side of the um, market, it's getting harder as well. And so the uh, complete mobility is changing. We do have um, a strong global expansion of public transportation. You can follow that. Uh, the, uh, the Deutsche Bahn is investing heavily into uh, the modernization of their railway system. Um, Egypt has launched the largest contract to Siemens mobility in the last weeks for they will um, build up a high-speed um, railway systems in Egypt and all over the world, you see the same um, development. Um, what we do see is the uh, already mentioned micro-mobility, like e-bikes, uh, scooters, um, and so on, uh, which overtake mileage from cars as well. <clears throat> Let's see. Fl maybe we will develop uh, the possibility to fly even in small ranges uh, below 1,000 kilometers uh, electrically. We are thinking about how do we store that much energy uh, for the planes, uh, maybe in hydrogen or e-fuels, we will see. But the, um, the drives for the, um, for the planes, they will be, of course, electrically. Then the Supplier side as well, it's getting uh, tougher for the car OEM, uh, for they have to deal with the very strong, big um, suppliers, which do not sell batteries, they do distribute the batteries. So um, that's n it's not a, um, a negotiation like in the past, in which the car manufacturer defined the conditions and the price, and the car supplier, or the um, the supplier for the cars was happy to get a, a big contract. No, it's now the other way around. So uh, who could supply batteries is king. We will see that uh, the car operating systems will join to a very small number of different um, operating systems. How many operating systems do you know in personal computers? Two main iOS and Windows. How many operating systems do you know in mobile phones? Two. We have Android and we have iOS. Um, and I dare to predict that we will have in cars in the next 10 years only less than five operating uh, systems as well. So who will win? Uh, we try to invest heavily VW, the biggest car manufacturer in the world, sometimes, more or less, um, they tried to hire 10,000 software developers, didn't find them, couldn't pay them, uh, they couldn't work together, it's tough. And these thousands of software develops, developers try to develop after, which is already in the market, which you, which you can already buy when you buy a Tesla, for example, uh, or when you... Um, negotiate a supplying contract, let's say, with Waymo, then you get the best um, operating system for cars, especially for navigation uh, purposes already. So will we B2B 
be successful in developing these operating systems all separately? MB.OS, um, BMW uh, operating system, and uh, carry it um, at, uh, at VW with their own operating system, that's getting hard. And uh, we will invest that much money, and finally, the question is, will we succeed? Other car, car manufacturers have already decided we will not win that game. Like uh, Ford, General Motors, Stellantis, and others, they do Jaguar, uh, Land Rover, they already use, for example, Waymo systems, which are in the market. And of course, the suppliers um, become increasingly competitors, for they are able to produce complete cars from small startups. Uh, as I said, it's easy to build up uh, or to design, to develop an electric car. Um, like the, all these small, like Ego Mobile, like street, street scooter, like Sono, very small uh, startups uh, which can use these uh, 0.5 uh, tier tire suppliers as a manufacturer for the complete car. And last but not least, uh, as I already said, there are so many new competitors which we have to deal with. Um, and um, the, v the VW strategic papers normally had as the biggest, uh, most significant competitors on their paper BMW, um, Mercedes-Benz, maybe Toyota, and now what can you read on these papers? You see NIO, BYD, Hyundai more or less, um, and all, Tesla of course, uh, and all the other um, new, uh, newly coming up uh, car suppliers uh, which are getting uh, pace and market shares uh, steadily. Of course the biggest um, electric car manufacturer is Tesla. It's uh, the most precious one at the same time, it's not VW, it's not Toyota, it's Tesla. And uh, just guess who is the okay, third most, um, most precious uh, car manufacturer in the world? Tesla, Toyota, uh, but then VW, Mercedes-Benz, GM? No, it's already BYD. It's already build your dreams in China. Um, and we will see that the the other companies, like if you see Polestar, it looks like a Volvo, but Volvo already belongs to Geely, 100%. And so the, um, the joint venture between Volvo and Geely, Polestar, of course, belongs to Geely as well. And Geely uh, owns, at the same time, you know, 10% of Mercedes-Benz as well. So is Mercedes-Benz still an, a German car when 10% belong, belongs to a Chinese car and uh, two times 10% belongs to uh, Arabic uh, nations? You uh, judge yourself. The other companies talk from, um, from uh, Turkey, um, Aways, um, Saik, uh, Bike, uh, Sherry, Chile, and so on. They are all coming from, um, from China. Uh, and Neo is already uh, selling cars, electric cars, to Norwich, uh, to the Netherlands, and will come to Germany uh, latest next year as well. So um, this situation is um, supported by an increasing regulation which makes it, of course, uh, more complicated. Uh, we do have CO2 limits. And when you listen to the discussion, always German companies, German industry tries uh, to slow down the um, uh, reducing CO2 limits all the time. And most of the time, they are successful. There are penalties which then have to pay, be paid, for example, to Tesla. Tesla earned in the last quart quarter around about 350 million US dollars uh, for these uh, T, uh, CO2 uh, certificates. Uh, we will have uh, driving bans, as I already mentioned. Um, the technology is meanwhile promoted. One year ago, I always uh, um, flip through the magazines and count the um, advertisements of uh, car manufacturers. One year ago, only uh, special cars driven by combustion engines. And now you see one electric car after the other. It's getting trendy uh, to drive an electric car. So it's getting promoted. And uh, um, we see rates, shares, which have to be met um, by uh, legal registration. But, and that's the biggest problem for us, 
uh, of course, we do have a, a very high exit barriers. It's not so easy for VW or Mercedes-Benz to step out of the conventional uh, business, for we do have a very high product-specific cost. Ten thousands of engineers who are specialized in transmissions, in combustion engines, in air handling, whatever. Um, it's not so easy to requalify them to an electric drivetrain. <clears throat> getting employees, uh, getting rid of employees, it's very expensive. Um, and I follow the M&A market at the moment. Uh, you cannot imagine how many um, electric module plants are uh, on the block are sold at the moment. Uh, here in Nürnberg, a very uh, high-tech plant of the company um, Bitesco, a spin-off of uh, Continental, is uh, reducing their staff from 1, uh, 160 to only 400. So they um, lay off right about 800 persons in a plant which is absolutely state-of-the-art. Um, for, of course, you will uh, see, we at the moment do have around about 100 to 200 um, electric control units in every um, a premium car. Um, and this high number of electric control units, we do have um, um, specialists of uh, automotive suppliers here in the, um, in the auditorium. Um, and you know that uh, the, by reducing the number of uh, easy use, we do have to reduce the number of employees, of staff, and the number of plants. From now, around about 100, 150, 150 to, let's say, five. In a Tesla Model 3, we do have five easy use. In a Lucid, we do have four. And uh, the question is, where do we end? From 150 to four, you can um, easily calculate uh, the necessary um, added value in our electronic plants. So the Exit barriers are very high. That's the reason why, of course, the OEMs try to slow down the change um, from old technology to new technology. But unfortunately, we are not alone in the market. <clears throat> Some win, uh, even the state has ownership uh, in the car manufacturers, um, like VW, for example, um, or others. Or in, in France, um, the, the French state has ownership in uh, Renault, for example. So that's, that's a, a very tough market situation at the moment. And if I communicate, I normally use the, um, the three uh, jump communication, uh, SCS, situation, complication, consequences. And we do see that we have pushed ourselves in the European car industry in a vicious, in a self-made vicious survey. The diesel engines were massively subsidized for Decades after the war, we said somewhere uh, we reduce the taxes from gasoline to diesel by in Germany around about 20 cent. So all the time, I don't know, 50 or 60 years, diesel was 20 cent cheaper than gasoline. That was stable, and for this uh, immense um, subsidy, of course, engineers are uh, intelligent and they adapted to that situation. It was not the it's what not, it was not the problem. Uh, of the, the gasoline engine. It was fast, it was, um, emis the, the emissions were quite low, uh, no particles uh, and so on. Uh, but this high subs subsidy, that was the target for our engineers. Unfortunately, the situation was only in Europe. So n we do not have this subsidi uh, subsidies in the, in the US, nor in, um, in Asia, or especially in China. So, Diesel engines are only sold in Europe in a big portion. That meant that we have invested heavily in that technology. We built up plants. We developed the uh, technologies uh, for raising the torque uh, at low speed, for reducing the emissions, uh, for reducing the vibrations. And one, uh, actually, the diesel engine is a, is a tractor drive for tractors and trucks. But we were successful, um, and uh, for we are su that successful, and for we earned that much money, 
uh, with the diesel engines, we of course try to maximize the life cycle of this old technology. And this, this again um, leads uh, to the point that we tried um, using our strong industry um, lobby to, um, to slow down the uh, substitution um, of uh, ICEs by electric drives. So while the world developed new technology, we tried to fight for our own technology. And by the way, it's always the same picture. When a new technology comes, we try to, um, uh, to neglect it. Uh, it's not existent. Mobile phones, no. Uh, we we community, uh, communicate uh, uh, otherwise. Uh, then we try to uh, increase the fear of the new technology. It uh, will get uh, cancer in the head, for example. Uh, don't use mobile phones. And when it's too late, then we try uh, to uh, hurry up and to uh, close the gap to the uh, other nations, but then normally it's too late. So you cannot buy a mobile phone from a German company. So that was, of course, again, the same reaction. Um, and so the, the market for electric vehicles in Germany slowed really do down, so we were successful. I was the first buyer of a BMW i3, a very nice car, a very innovative, uh, but after launching that car, BMW didn't, uh, uh, brought, uh, didn't bring an, a new electric car. It was a, a 10 years pause uh, uh, when the next uh, electric drives came up into the market. <clears throat> but we were successful. We could uh, sell old cars with high margins, so when you buy a Mercedes-Benz, an SUV, what you probably do, uh, then you pay 5,000 euros for advertisement and 10,000 euros uh, margin. So congratulations. <clears throat> um, and that brings the danger for the European OEMs that we, of course, lag behind the strong uh, technological change in the world. <clears throat> but uh, now the, yeah, well, the environment, the consumers strike back, they realized that the future lies in uh, emission-free drives. Um, and so legislation um, and consumer interest um, shifts towards uh, electric drives. Uh, but unfortunately, now we do have a big backlog in technology. Uh, we do have to develop the batteries. We do have to develop the uh, operating systems, we do have to develop the uh, power electronics, the uh, EE um, concepts in the car, and that uh, takes some time. <clears throat> and now, uh, huge investments in battery factories, in development uh, of new cars have to be paid, uh, as you can see uh, within VW, for example, uh, to close the gap to the um, international uh, competitors. <clears throat> and now the question is, uh, what will happen now? When at the same time, uh, we do not have uh, these subsidies from the market, uh, like the, the tax subsidies on uh, hybrid cars, for example, uh, for firm car drivers, they only pay half the taxes as uh, um, a car driver without a small engine is paying uh, when the, the purchasing um, subsidies uh, will be stopped, what will happen uh, then? Um, then, of course, the margins will go down um, and maybe the dividends will shrink and uh, yeah, financing becomes more expensive, uh, which was cheap in the past. Um, and uh, the problem is what will European car manufacturing do in the future? Uh, strategic partnerships, what is already happening, you do probably do not realize that, uh, especially in China, so all the German the car manufacturers do have already strong partnerships uh, with Chinese um, competitors. Uh, will there be acquisitions? We will see, which already happened. So um, MG was bought, Volvo was bought, Saab was bought, uh, a big portion of uh, Mercedes-Benz was already uh, sold, uh, London Taxi, and so on and so on. Uh, all these 
companies went already to Chinese, Chinese owners. So that's the market situation. And then we look upon uh, new technology. Of course, this is uh, the Tesla Model Y, which is already produced in, uh, uh, in Germany, in uh, Grünheide, nearby Berlin. And they built up the complete plant to the SOP, start of production, in only two years. Uh, I compare that with the rental of a new uh, flat, uh, not flat, but a um, research a laboratory, uh, which we try uh, to get in Fürth, a small city uh, nearby. Since five years, we try to just rent that, um, that uh, laboratory, uh, impossible. And they build, build up a plant in two years. So, but if you look into the car, you see, you know, okay, it has an electric drive. The battery doesn't seem to be that bad. Uh, the range is quite long, okay. It's not that uh, expensive. You can charge it everywhere, on every 150 kilometers all over Europe. There's a supercharger, um, not with 50, 100, 150, but with 250 uh, charging power. So, but what, what is in the car? What do we have to learn from that car? Uh, Okay, it's still one of the fast, fastest uh, accelerating car in the, in the market. So you can buy Teslas with less than two seconds from 0 to uh, 60 miles or 100 kilometers per hour. Uh, some German car manufacturer, sports car manufacturer, uh, do have to build into the car a shifting transmission to reach that uh, acceleration power. The consumption of energy is very low. Um, so 15 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Uh, that's equal around about 1.5 liters um, per 100 kilometers uh, for a car, which is around about 1,700 um, kilograms uh, heavy. The same weight, by the way, um, which has a BMW um, 4 series about. <clears throat> and what is very nice is that the engine control is 10 times faster than an ICE. If you have to accelerate on a um, wet road, for example, uh, then the control in a combustion engine uh, does work with the brakes. So if the traction is not there, then we close the brakes. Here we can uh, control the drive that fast that we do not have to brake the, uh, the, the wheels. Uh, we can just uh, bring that much torque onto the road, uh, which the road uh, can uh, apply. So the drive is still quite competitive. Uh, the battery, of course, it's, it's still developed further. At the moment, we have around about 300 watt hours per liter for um, 100 um, kilowatt hours. You need um, 30,000 uh, liters, which is uh, calculated um, in the um, in square meters. So the capacity is up to 100 uh, kilowatts. The cost uh, goes down to only 100 euros per kilowatt hour. That means um, 40 or 60 kilowatt hour battery costs around about five to 6,000 uh, euros. And the endurance of the battery is already much longer than uh, 1 million miles. That means you can use one battery uh, 100 years when you only drive less than uh, 17,000 kilometers per year, 100 years. The question is, is do we have a problem uh, with the recycling of, uh, of batteries? I don't think so. And then you can use it in a stationary uh, application. I already mentioned uh, charging infrastructure. While the European uh, OEM asked the state for building up charging infrastructure, you can use it uh, every 150 uh, kilometers, there is such a super, uh, supercharger, um, and there are a, a lot of gimmicks which ensures that the charging time is really um, very short. <clears throat> um, and then, of course, the user interface, we are discussing that all the time. We do only have one screen, 15 inch wide, uh, and no, no uh, buttons uh, in the whole um, car. In, uh, interior uh, room, you only have one um, one uh, uh, screen. Um, okay, that means um, 
maybe uh, not very um, usual for us old guys. We are used to push uh, buttons and to uh, turn wheels, uh, but the younger generation, they love it. And uh, unfortunately, in China, German car manufacturers do not sell, almost do not sell electric uh, cars. Uh, VW is in market position 15 in China. For the, um, uh, the IT competence is not strong enough. Then we do have completely different uh, electric and uh, electronic topology. Uh, there are only some uh, easy use, high performance computers, uh, liquid cooled, uh, redundant um, applied. So if uh, one, if you um, look upon Lucid Motors, uh, the CTO, um, Eric Bach, is an alumnus uh, of FAU. He explained the EE architecture of the Lucid Motors and they do only have four uh, easy use um, mounted in the corners of the car. If there's an accident, from which side, um, um, then you always have redundant uh, high performance computers which can overtake the computing tasks. <clears throat> um, we do have research projects in which we do automize uh, with using robots uh, the uh, assembly of uh, melting fuses into the melting box. Um, very unergonomic uh, tasks for uh, workers that can be done by um, robots, but Tesla already, they do have electronic switches. They do not have melting fuses. Uh, electronic switches is the solution of, uh, of the future. And then, well, uh, Tesla is probably the only car manufacturer uh, which is developing their own computer systems. Not only the computer systems in the car, I don't call it ECU, it's a computer system, high performance computer system. It's the biggest uh, chip um, assembled in a car ever. It has a um, edge length of around about 40 millimeters and thousands of con interconnecting uh, balls at the bottom having a, a diameter of 30 microns only, so half of the hair. Um, and the design and, um, um, is completely in the responsibility of the car manufacturer. So they are not specialists in deep drawing uh, the body shape or, or in machining uh, the V8 cylinder motor, they is, it's an electronic company and a software company. Then the wire harness, of course, we are proud of our um, industry here in the region which do um, offer the wire harness, Leoni AG, Traxelmeyer, uh, Combat and Schubert, uh, but also Sumitomo, and uh, you, you name them, they are responsible for laying the wires um, for the uh, cable, uh, for the wiring harness system in the car. At the moment, 3,000 um, meters long, 100 kilograms heavy, hundreds of euros uh, expensive, and thousands of interconnecting points uh, in, the, in, this, in the plugs. In the future, while we do only have um, five instead of 100 ECUs, in which we have only one screen instead of hundreds of buttons uh, and turning wheels, uh, the complexity of the EE architecture will reduce to one-tenth only. So Tesla is uh, already uh, announcing that they will have in the future only 300 meter uh, cable length in the car. That means for the industry, for the cable industry, a reduction of the turnover to one-tenth. So, uh, Leoni will have not 4 billion turnover, but only 4, 400 million. Uh, you have to think through these advantages uh, to evaluate the situation of our car manufacturers at the moment. <clears throat> uh, of course, in, in German cars, we do have Litz wired cables, very fine, hair fine, uh, copper wires, uh, which are um, drilled uh, together uh, to be able not for the conductivity gets better, but only for be, to be able uh, to assemble, uh, to lay this um, very thick, uh, less wired cable into the car assembly. That's very expensive. It's very hard to assemble it by, uh, by hand. Uh, the alternative is to have uh, thick conductor bars, um, which are already uh, used in that car. <clears throat> the, these, these conductor rails uh, can be produced very uh, much cheaper and can be assembled automatically as well. 
And so it's going further and further uh, upgrade over the air since 10 years. We do have in the Tesla, almost we bought our Tesla 2014, since 2014. We uh, appreciate every month new, not, boxes, not bug fixes, but new functionalities. Uh, higher charging power, higher driving power, uh, less um, energy consumption, Netflix, uh, Spotify, uh, Dashcam, uh, a, a surveillance camera, whatever. Uh, every month new uh, functions uh, which are brought to you as the customer um, over the air. That works without any problem. Uh, and that's, that, for example, that was the, uh, this over the air uh, update was the biggest problem for the new IDX cars, uh, which could launch only uh, with a very long delay of uh, several months. Uh, power electronics are already mentioned. Uh, uh, since Tesla is, drive, is uh, producing the Model 3, they do use silicon uh, carbide uh, as a power electronics semiconductor, uh, which is switching very, fa very much faster and uh, has a 20% higher um, efficiency. So cars using this technology can be controlled uh, better and do use uh, or do, do lose less energy. <clears throat> um, autonomous driving, um, we will see who will win. Um, and uh, we do see first cars, Mercedes-Benz, uh, which is already offering level three. And uh, level four um, cars are already announced. I think uh, my next car, uh, the decision for next car, will be based upon the um, capability of the car to drive um, autonomously. And uh, OK, there are a lot of other innovations which are already in the car, which we are not uh, thinking about. <clears throat> a very low drag coefficient. So the only loss we do have in electric cars, before it break, the only loss is uh, the, the fight against the wind. Um, we could double the range um, of an electric car when we could reduce um, the drag coefficient uh, by uh, 50%, more or less. For the drive train, is that efficient, more than 90%, and we do not have too much other uh, consumers in the car. So wind, um, energy, uh, so the, the, the fight against the, the wind is the uh, most important uh, thing we do have to develop. And then next year, the Cybertruck uh, will be uh, launched. And again, a big step innovation will come up uh, for um, the whole body shop, which uh, costs around about $2 billion of investment in every car plant, could be eliminated nearly completely. For the Cybertruck, uh, does not have to um, deep draw the surface of the, the body laminations for it's just flat. It looks funny. Uh, you will be have to get used to the design. Um, uh, but the, the purpose behind form follows function is that we do not have to press uh, the laminations. Then um, it doesn't have to be um, um, welded. Um, we normally do have hundreds of robots uh, which are welding the, um, um, the steel uh, sheets together. For we do have one aluminum uh, frame, which is die casted. In one uh, shot, uh, we can assemble the flat panels directly to the aluminum um, um, body structure. And so we do not have um, to um, melt the, the steel sheets together. And last but not least, the car is not being painted. So it's a big um, hazard to the environment to paint the cars. Um, it's made of, Cybertruck is made of um, stainless steel, and so it will not be painted. Uh, and these three uh, innovations, again, will reduce the investments by billion and thereby reduce the cost of the car furthermore. And then, um, Tesla's not stopping. Uh, this is only um, focused on the car itself. 
now Tesla announced uh, in their artificial intelligence, in, uh, intelligence uh, day last year, in August last year, that they will start to develop their own supercomputer. They need to have uh, computing power uh, to compute uh, the, um, the, the data from the cameras. Millions of Teslas are uploading all the time. And that will be done in the dojo training tile based uh, supercomputer um, uh, to um, offer one teraflop um, computing power, the uh, fastest uh, supercomputer at the moment um, is only half that fast. Um, it realized a 4D vector space, so not only pictures or video sequences uh, will be processed, but three-dimensional information plus the time. And by that, uh, Tesla's building up a live um, map of the world. Um, wherever uh, Tesla cars will move around, they will um, update this uh, 4D, 4D uh, map. And they will have, using this supercomputer, a realistic um, simulation capability in which uh, the neural networks can be trained artificially in the computer. So uh, you can discuss that very long. Uh, I think I have to hurry up a little bit. Um, what it's all about is efficiency. And um, the big thing uh, of electric drive is that the efficiency is much better. In, in an electric motor, you do have losses of, let's say, 5 to 10%, let's say 8%. In a combustion engine, you have to have losses of 80%. Um, and by that, you can reduce the uh, primary um, energy demand by factor 10. That shows that quite complex picture. Uh, we do have to go into details. You can read that uh, from the documents. Uh, we can calculate that very uh, detailed and they can update the model very fast. Just for your, um, just for remembering, um, just the refining of 10 liters of petrol requires round about 16 kilowatts of energy. With, you remember, with 16 kilowatts of energy, an electric car can drive 100 kilometers. So the same, the same amount of energy we do have to use to refine the crude oil to gasoline, with this amount of energy, we can drive the same amount with an electric car. So all the discussions uh, which ask you where does the electric energy, where does the energy come from uh, to drive cars electric, are more or less nonsense. Okay, we can discuss that uh, in the Q&A session. Uh, and even worse, uh, H2 or even e-fuels are. Uh, so the wasting precious electric energy in um, reducing water to H2 um, leads to a loss or leads to a, an efficiency of only 22%. And if you do want to generate e-fuels by using um, hydrogen, then you have a total energy, a uh, total efficiency of only 13%. Uh, 13%. Do we have that much um, extra energy? I doubt. When will we have too much energy? Do we have too much land, too much money, too much food, too much energy? We won't. We won't. And we cannot um, afford to waste energy if we do have a better technology. The only problem is storage of energy. And um, I would like to paint a picture in which uh, I, I was wondering, should I sing? I'm a fan of the Beach Boys. And <laughs> OK, it's too old for you. So wouldn't it be nice uh, if you could drive completely emission free? OK, I think that dream has already uh, fulfilled. We can just buy an electric car, rent it, use it, and we drive completely uh, emission-free by using regenerative energy. At home, I do produce more PV power that I uh, use uh, with three cars and my uh, complete house. So the technology is there. But uh, more than that, uh, wouldn't it be nice if electric cars became lighter and cheaper uh, when we could use smaller batteries, for we do not have um, to equip the cars with a 100 kilowatt hour battery which weighs 
500 kilograms and more uh, to realize a range of 1,000 kilometers or I don't know how many hundred kilometers. If that could be realized, wouldn't that be nice? And here you do see a, a video uh, of Siemens, again, 10 years old. 10 years ago, they announced the technology for the inductive power transfer. Um, and they would like to uh, sell this technology um, to the OEM. And the idea was we put a, um, well, that size um, coil into the parking lot and the same uh, coil into the car, on the bottom of the car, and we transfer the electric energy by a high-frequent magnetic field in the car. Wherever we park, at home, uh, um, where we work, where we um, go for sports, where we do go for shopping, everywhere we just park over the coil and the energy flows directly into the car. Wouldn't that be nice? By that, uh, we could, of course, um, reduce the effort for handling the cable uh, at bad weather, um, and we always would leave the parking lot with a full battery. The technology is there since 10 years. And wouldn't it be nice if we could even have an unlimited range? I don't want to talk about 1,000 kilometers or 2,000 kilometers, unlimited. An unlimited range for electric cars uh, without having the necessity to go to a uh, gas station or to a, a charging uh, point, just sit into the car and drive. And here, a company is called Electron, and again, a foreign company coming from Israel is already um, um, one billion US dollars worth at the stock exchange, a startup company which offers the technology not only to charge uh, the cars while they park, but also while they uh, drive, not only in, uh, in cities, but also on highways. The technology is there. Ten, no, 30, ten, 12 years ago, 12 years ago, I had been in uh, Korea in Seoul at the Korean Advanced Institute of Science and Technology, KAIST, and I was able to uh, drive a bus uh, with an IPT technology, inductive power transfer uh, technology with 60 kilowatts um, power transfer, uh, at a uh, um, speed velocity of 60 uh, kilometers per hour, 12 years ago. The technology is, is here, uh, but it was, um, but, but we didn't develop it further, for we preferred to sell big diesel SUVs. So, um, and, if, and even if trucks could drive electrically, for the electric road could supply enough power that, as you can see here, these are um, not faked videos. This is a test track uh, um, on the island Gotland, uh, in which Electron has already built up a test track uh, for trucks. So we are able to um, transfer up to 50 kilowatts for that size of a coil. And if you multiply the number of coils, then you can uh, multiply the, uh, the power. So we could even uh, charge um, trucks and buses uh, inductively. And uh, as I said, if we could only reduce um, the, the power against the wind, then we could reduce the power consumption dramatically. Uh, it's called platooning. It was already tested for trucks, as you can see here, uh, but that would make sense for passenger cars, of course, as well, uh, for we could reduce the energy um, usage dramatically, and we do not have enough energy. If you could reduce the usage um, of an electric car from 16 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers to eight or less, then we could um, improve the environmental uh, compatibility strongly. Again, technology is here, we just have to apply it. And uh, um, we have developed a web-based tool in which you can compare the different technologies to extend the range of electric cars, um, big batteries, for example, um, H2, um, or inductive power transfer. Um, and you can change the border conditions, and you can change the size of the car, whatever, and you will get at once um, 
the results on the usage of uh, energy, the efficiency, the usage of rare, uh, uh, rare materials, for example, by building or using bigger batteries and so on. Uh, of course, we do have to um, lay copper into the roads. How much impact does that have uh, on the environment? That's uh, already implemented in that um, calculation system and somewhere there's uh, probably the, the web address. We can um, send it to you uh, afterwards. How does it work? As I said, we just have one coil in infrastructure, one coil in the car, um, and then we realize a magnetic flux from the primary to the secondary uh, coil, um, and we can increase the efficiency. You know that the efficiency is reduced by the distance um, by building up a, um, a magnetic coupling, uh, which is um, adjusted very perfectly between the primary and the secondary coil. And uh, by optimizing that transfer and the design, um, we can reach um, efficiencies of the power transfer of more than 90%. So that's absolutely equal uh, to the conductive power transfer for when you um, push 200 kilowatts through a cable into the car, the cable's getting hot, you lose um, a lot of energy as well, so it's absolutely comparable. But the advantage is that we can drive directly uh, the electric motor, the traction drive, and by that um, we do not have to accept the losses of the battery, uh, which can be 5% or more as well. A quite cheap uh, solution, and uh, if you don't believe that it could work, we do have um, test tracks all over the world, as I said, at the KAIST, uh, that's already 2010, it was 2010. Then in uh, New Zealand, um, a colleague of mine uh, has developed that technology very early, sold it to Qualcomm. Qualcomm has sold it, Qualcomm is the market leader in uh, the mobile phone technology. Qualcomm has sold it to Vitricity, an MIT um, uh, spin-off. And now Siemens has bought some stakes of Vitricity some weeks ago, for uh, Siemens will step into the stationary inductive power transfer. Uh, I talked to the CTO today. Um, unfortunately, the building technologies division is not responsible for the mobility, and so they do not, they are not allowed to apply this technology which they have bought in roads. Uh, then we have uh, in Knoxville uh, test tracks in uh, France, a big EU project uh, financed by the EU uh, with Qualcomm, for example, uh, which shows the feasibility of technology. I already mentioned uh, Gotland and Karlsruhe. Uh, they do in Cologne and others more. So since 10 years, we are working on that technology. We started with the project eProfile, around about 2 million euros from the... Uh, um, ministry for uh, state ministry for economics and uh, energy, it's, which is called now. Um, this was uh, focusing the stationary um, charging. Uh, then we uh, started the uh, project called E Road, uh, financed as well uh, from the same uh, ministry, uh, focusing on semi dynamic charging up to two, 22 kilowatts for. Uh, bus stops for taxi uh, parking lots and so on. And now we will start uh, the project EM Power. Uh, we hope uh, for 8 million euros from the same ministry. And here we want to build up a test track on a North Bavarian uh, highway to show on a one kilometers um, uh, long test track that this technology is working well not only to the uh, decisive persons in industry and in politics, but also to the public. What is important? So as I said, the technology is there since Tesla, the, the old Tesla, who was already um, using that uh, technology of uh, transferring energy by uh, magnetic fields. Uh, so the technology is there. We do now have just to apply it, and that means we have to industrialize it. We have to produce it that 
uh, reliable and cheap that everybody can afford it. And that's our task at FAPS, and we do look upon the whole process chain for these um, wires, so we do uh, develop processes, automated processes for the winding the flat coils, um, for the formation of the electric contacts. Of course, we want to transfer tenth of uh, kilowatts um, uh, of power. Um, we do have to do a lot of assembly tasks, of course, uh, supported by robots, maybe collaborative robots. Um, we do have to integrate um, the compensation um, materials and we do realize uh, the housing and the potting systems. Of course, all these um, coils are, um, are housed in a plastic cover, for example, um, and encapsulated by epoxy. And of course, we do develop uh, end-of-line tests together with industry, not only for the um, module manufacturing, the secondary side, but, but also for the infrastructure side. And so we hope that we will get the support of the Bavarian Ministry for uh, Economics and Energy in the next month to build up a research center in the former uh, plant of Michelin in Hallstatt nearby Bamberg, uh, the Clean Tech Innovation Park, and there we want to build up such a research center for e-road applications. Um, and by the way, of course, we do need the engineers uh, which do have the qualification uh, for the new way of uh, driving and mobility. And that's why we have started a new course. Uh, we call it uh, Electromobility, or briefly ACES stands for Autonomous Driving, uh, Connected Driving, but not also, but only information-wise uh, connected, but also energy-wise connected, electrically driven and sustainable. Sustainable um, production and sustainable usage. The um, course will start this winter semester in parallel, the bachelor and the master's course, and it's uh, uh, exciting for that many departments work together, electrical engineering, computer science, uh, chemical and biological engineering, uh, the new department for artificial intelligence, uh, material science, of course, and uh, last but not least, the mechanical engineering department or the production technology department. That was all I wanted to tell to you today, uh, and I'm now happy to ask any kind of question if there's still time, and uh, I'm sure that we will see that fast change. This is a picture um, from uh, Manhattan in the year 1900, and you can look for, you can um, search for cars, only one car, in this whole huge of carriages. Uh, t 10 years later, only 10 years later, you only see uh, cars, no carriage any longer. When we reach the tipping point, then um, there's no brake, then the, um, we will not have any combustion cars any longer. So thank you very much for your interest, your patience, uh, and I'm now happy to answer any kind of questions. Thank you very much. <clears throat> yes, now we come to the Q&A session. Um, is my microphone on? Okay, thank you. Um, just a short explanation. Um, we have also viewers on YouTube. You can just go below the YouTube video. There you find a link to slido.com. And uh, you can just enter the link and easily pose your question, either anonymously or you can enter a name, whichever you want. And uh, you can also go to slido.com and enter the password, which is simply in capital letters, ELISA. And yeah, thank you for your very fascinating talk, also for the non-engineers, I have to admit. And uh, yeah, we can take questions from the live audience as well. And maybe I would have a first question. For me, it was fascinating to see that we, are, we already had um, electric um, engines before a long time. So in the 19th century, there were already electric mm -hmm. engines. And you made a very strong point for the future of electric engines and that they, yeah, they are the future, so mm -hmm. to speak. That's so the title of this talk today. And why is it that over a century uh, the combustion engine was so dominant and that is right now after more than 100 years that the electric engine is rediscovered and, and apparently uh, yeah, making the way into the future? As always, 
money. Uh, when we do accept that fossil energy is that much cheaper than electric energy, that of course we drive combustion engines. When you look into your cellar, if you still have an, an oil-based heating system, then you uh, bought in the past one kilowatt hour for around about five cent. Five cent, uh, but one kilowatt hour electric energy costs all the time 30 cent, six times more. So uh, our society is always supporting and subsidizing burning fossil energy. And that's the reason for, and uh, so the sellers, the vendors of uh, fossil energy, they are cute. And we are comfortable, we want to be comfortable. So we buy just the cheapest way of energy. And if you always have to, if I'm honest, I do have PV system on my roof and I can heat up uh, the water um, electrically, directly by the sun. And uh, think about, I can sell electric energy uh, for a price of 12 cent per kilowatt hour. And I could uh, alternatively um, heat up the water by using oil, which costs five cent. So and as an economical decision, I have to burn oil and, and uh, should not use electric energy. And that was the case over a long period of time. So the, all the nations um, and the dictators from all over the world, they always sold oil less expensive than uh, alternative technologies. That was always clear. And we always played that game with them, for it was cheaper for us. And so we did not take the chance to change over to more environmental compatible technologies. That's that easy. Okay, so the price is running the system, so to speak. And uh, yeah, we can, we can take questions <coughs> from the audience, um, if you wish. Are there any questions? Yes. To that, because I think that yeah. to reach the tipping point, we need to have a well, yeah. complete remake yeah. uh, yeah. of the infrastructure. Yeah, uh, of course. <laughs> yeah, uh, there are some uh, several suppliers already uh, who could be able to supply that uh, technology of electrified road. Uh, Max Bögel could be one, only 50 kilometers away from here. So they supply, for example, the solid um, uh, solid tracks for the high-speed railway system. They supply the, the concrete elements for the windcraft uh, mills. And they do have a tra test track uh, nearby um, in the northern part of Germany where you can already test that IPT technology based on concrete. Uh, but the, our current partner in these uh, German research projects is the company Electron. And they claim that one kilometer of uh, electrification costs around about one million euro. Easy to remember. One million euro. That means uh, if we just electrify the highways in Germany, we do have around about 12,000, 13,000, 12,500, I don't know, uh, kilometers highways. So every highway could be um, applied uh, with uh, um, these coils. Then we would have 12,000 times one million means 12 billion. Okay, you want to come back as well. So let's say 25 billion. 25 billion for the electrification of all uh, highways in Germany. If you compare 25 billion, for example, for the licenses for my mobile phones, you remember, I don't know, 20 years ago, uh, Vodafone paid 100 uh, billion for oh, just for the licenses. Uh, if you compare it to the subsidies of diesel, if we do uh, subsidize diesel every year with around about 5 billion per year. So within five years, we could amortize uh, the electrification of whole Germany. Uh, if you compare it to other senseless uh, subsidies we do spend in Germany, it would be easy. And of course, we could not do it in one year. If you stretch it to 10 years, you would have to pay every year 2.5 
billion. That's almost nothing. We just have to start. But um, it's a question. Will the German industry use the chance for this leapfrog strategy or will it just die over the time for they will lose competitiveness year after year? From my point of view, you might laugh, um, this inductive power technology is the only chance, the last chance we do have to sustain the dominance of German technology in automotive. Um, last chance. So, <clears throat> it's a historic I, moment. I sense a, a, a grain of pessimism there. No, <laughs> and um, some um, optimism um, as well. No, we do have, a, a, well, uh, since 10 years we, uh, we offer this technology, and, uh, but uh, history is showing up that new technologies always need these 10 to 20 uh, years to get into the market. Mm. So if you look about um, multi-touch displays and I don't know what, a, what else, uh, um, mobile phones, always 10 years when the first uh, reaction in the market comes up. For, of course, old technology uh, is uh, fighting against. Yeah. I found a picture that you showed before this slide a very fascinating in the New York um, street <laughs> okay. picture yeah. uh, with the horse carriages and then yeah. 13 years afterwards um, all these cars, combustion engine cars of course. Okay, 13 years later. And, and what, what do you think, um, this, will, this will be the case as well for right now that we will see in, in let's say 15 years just, it, yes, just of um, yes, of course. Said, electric cars? Um, uh, the European uh, government banned uh, combustion engines uh, from 2035 onwards. We will not reach that, that year. For everybody will buy, will love to buy electric cars much before. So it's, it's a discussion which is senseless for uh, when we do not hinder the usage of electric cars. If we do, um, when, when I charge my electric car on the auto route, on the highway, then I have to pay uh, 50 cent or more for the kilowatt hour. 50 cent, that means comparable to one liter gasoline, not diesel, doesn't make sense, it doesn't make a difference, um, the, the liter gasoline would cost five euros. So I pay five euros for the energy equivalent of one uh, liter gasoline. And if we just, but, uh, and, and that uh, also uh, electric energy is much cheaper to generate compared to, um, compared to uh, the refining of oil and gasoline transport and the whatever you need for that. It's just for we subsidize still burning oil. And that cannot be long term uh, the solution. Thank you. Um, do we already have some questions from the, okay, so maybe our chat is already burning a little bit, so maybe. Of um, questions. Uh, a lot of them, or some of them, are addressing the research prospects in electromobility. Mm. And one person, probably a student, is asking, what are the current research opportunities for upcoming e-mobility master's students at FAU? Hundreds. So we educate, we educate around about um, 300 bachelor, master's, and project thesis every year at FAPS. And a big portion of these uh, student uh, tasks are prepared in the field of electromobility. So we do optimize uh, and produce uh, electric motors, uh, power el um, electronics, uh, batteries in the future very strongly, and of course, uh, with a very big effort, uh, inductive power transfer systems. So if the student, whoever, is interested in uh, supporting us in developing these new technologies, um, he or she is very welcome. Okay, maybe we have another question from the online audience. Um, yes, there are some questions also addressing or looking a bit further into the future and addressing alternative energy sources away from electrical energy and future um, technology approaches. Um, so one person is asking, do you think e-mobility is the only way out of climate catastrophe or do we have multiple solutions in the future for different use cases? No, there's only electrical uh, mobility, period. For we, uh, it's, it's, it's a physical uh, situation for uh, electricity does have almost 100% of exergy. That's the usable uh, amount of energy in anything. Uh, and you cannot um, uh, outperform that. So if you wanna use energy most efficiently, then you have to stay with electricity. 
and every transfer of electricity to H2, to E fuels and backwards uh, does lose such a big amount of, of energy. It really doesn't make sense. If you can stay with electricity, do that. And then you have to uh, use electric drives. At the moment, these electric drives are electromagnetic drives, electric motors. Over here. Um, first answer, uh, we do deal with magnetic fields, high frequent magnetic fields and not uh, electromagnetic fields. Mm -hmm. uh, magnetic fields are everywhere, uh, anytime. So the Earth magnetic field does have around about the same uh, strength as we deal with this. Well, of course, um, uh, fluctuating magnetic fields can generate uh, eddy currents. Um, for um, the it's difficult to explain, uh, and by these eddy currents, uh, L, um, um, conducting parts can heat up. That's true. Um, but um, second answer to the question: the magnetic field is only um, starting when a car and a, um, an adapted coil is over the magnetic field. Um, so. The car uh, tells the coil, the infrastructure, hello, I'm here, my name is, you can charge the energy to the following account number, uh, please give me energy, let's say 10 kilowatts or 20, whatever. So they communicate, uh, and if the communication was closed, then energy flows. That has to be very fast, no question. Um, and then um, the third answer is that uh, energy only uh, implies into a very well adapted uh, coil capacitor system uh, which has to be adjusted from the infrastructure to the secondary coil uh, in the car. Then the energy flow is best. Okay, I think we have time for, for maybe one or two last questions over here maybe. A test track, track, right? Mm -hmm. track yeah, side. yeah. Um, what, what are the possibilities? What can European uh, science cooperation bring us there? Of course, this technology cannot be um, applied in one nation only. Uh, that has to be a European um, effort, a IPT, European IPT Act, in which we show, we Europeans, show the world that electricity or el electromobility can work without emissions, without uh, uh, range limitations, um, and very convenient. Uh, so we will not any longer uh, drive to gasoline stations uh, like our mobile phones. We just put them on an inductive power transfer charging pad. You are used to that. It's the same technology. Uh, we just apply it with higher power to cars. Um, and if we, as Europeans, together, could show this technology to the world, and uh, when we define the standards, we are now um, uh, supporting the standardization efforts, IEC, for example, in which the geometry of the coils, in which the frequencies and, and um, the design of the coils in secondary and primary uh, defined. If we could lead that uh, standardization, and if we can um, at least supply the infrastructure, I think it would be better to sell infrastructure to the world than buying batteries from, uh, from Asia, and that, that would, it wouldn't be difficult. Uh, we are thinking about big European projects, uh, but unfortunately we are not that used to apply for 
uh, European project, and that could be the help of the other universities for uh, very often the southern European universities are more used to apply for European money, for they do not have that big bunch of uh, own money in their nations. That's a very inspiring word for the for the um, for finishing, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so let me finish. Um, I would like to thank Professor Franke uh, for his very inspiring Eliza Innovation Talk. The European Union, well, provocative if you want, <laughs> as the European Union's Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Program for funding the Eliza InnoCore project. The Eliza team for their support, Mr. Greve and his uh, camera team for live streaming the event and all the other people who made this event uh, possible. The next ELISA Innovation Talk will take place in September in Bucharest after the summer break. And I would like to thank you all for your participation today. And I hope to see you again at the, at the next ELISA Innovation Talk. And thank you for today.